Hi, Kushbu. Welcome. Hi, I'm, I'm just Hello. going. Hello, sir. Uh, Hello, sir. Hello, everybody. It's, it's with all of us, you know, we are really connected. Like it's raining outside and my network can go anytime. I see. Uh, <laughs> you, you've got a rain powered internet? <laughs> For now, yay. <laughs> <laughs> it is India and we say anything can happen in India. Like it's, <laughs> it is a saying here. <laughs> How are you doing otherwise? I'm okay. I am like, okay, just okay. Not worried, not afraid or not uh, freaking out. Those things are not happening. But I, I know like, I'm worried about my, like, like after one month, like, you know, how, how it's going to go. And uh. it, yeah, so, so that's real, like. And it's not anxiety, it's like pure consciousness that I know it's mess over there and I gotta clean it up, like things like that. So, yeah. Well, it's good to see you anyway. <laughs> Thank you. And for, so for me, like, I left my job like early January and I was like quite confident. I had like three interviews lined up in the time of quarantine. And I was like overconfident, like, I will get a job. I have enough experience. I don't have to worry. So I was in that, <laughs> which is quite true. I have done that for a long time. So, But then, yeah, <laughs> this is a, times are changing. Yes. Hi, Nicholas. Uh, there he Hello. is. Hello. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me, right? Yes, Hi. we can hear you. Good. How are you doing? Yep. Great. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Well, Terry, let's check in with you. How, how are things going with you? Good. I had, um, I had a bad day a couple of days ago and, um, and realized that after seven weeks of this, I'm entitled to a bad day. Sure. Um, <laughs> yes. And so, you know, I'm, I'm back. Um, it, I think these webinars are nice because it makes me get up and get dressed <laughs> rather than wait, you know, hanging out a little bit. I need some more structure and I think this helps a lot. Plus I enjoy the feedback and listening to everybody, but it's beautiful here in Kentucky, as you can see, sunny, um, seventies. Um, so, and it's spring and things are blooming and there's a lot to be grateful for. I, I try not to worry about my grandchildren and just stay in the, uh, we do a lot of uh, Eckhart Tolle, stay in the moment. Um, you know, rather regret regrets in the past or fear in the future. Right now, right this minute, everybody's okay and I'm okay. So if I could stay there, I find that that um, that takes away a lot of the. I I, um, I cycle. I ruminate when that stuff starts, and I have to find a way to get rid of it. And you have to. Rep I have to replace it with something else. I can't just tell myself to stop it. That doesn't work. So, yeah. yeah, doing well. I'm, um, I'm looking forward to Easter. I'm gonna, we're gonna drive over to my son's house and meet them in the yard and drop off some Easter goodies <laughs> <laughs> and oh. leave. I guess. <laughs> well, we've been, you know, we've been, um, we haven't set our foot in a store in five weeks. Wow. Um, but it's, but we're having things delivered, our farmer's market. I mean, we have, you know, I work at the farmer's market as a volunteer. We have uh, uh, organic spinach, lettuce, farm eggs. It's like a drug deal on the front porch. We leave the money, they bring the stuff. Uh, <laughs> and, and also um, with our groceries delivered, it gives us a chance. Um, the one man the other day as a Uber driver that's trying to make ends meet by delivering groceries. So that's a chance to give them a really great tip and know that handing it directly to somebody, I know I'm helping them. Yeah, that's great. So, you know, we've been doing that, um, but seven weeks of it, um, and I don't have any, you know, my heart goes out to people that are worried about being, you know, losing their jobs or already have lost them or um, somebody who's ill 
and you know needing chemotherapy and worried about going every week to get i mean i have so much to be grateful for and so yeah the one down day was just i just didn't want to get out of bed and um um so we went to another cemetery i said for us it's hilarious what we do to feel better is go to different cemeteries and walk around uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that we just feel better because we're there it's just interesting and it gets exercise and you know um I think I sent that one, I think um, the day I was having such a bad day, we wanted, we were going to go in the morning and we finally got up, uh, we went at five o'clock. It was still good. So, uh, and we found a tombstone that Bubba, did I send that? I might yes, have, you mentioned so that. That was the bad day. And, and I think I, it's a reminder that I need some structure, but it's also okay not to have a productive day and just give, give myself permission to just be whatever it is that day and work on it when it's not um when i when i realize it's bad though it's several well one thing that's really great about cemeteries i think is nobody's really freaked out everybody in the cemetery is pretty relaxed (laughs) well and the tombstone we're finding each one has um my husband uh, uh, has, has a photography hobby and we're taking lots of pictures and we'll put, we'll put an album out online soon. But every cemetery has its own flavor, you know, and the tombstones are interesting and um, it's peaceful and beautiful and, um, and the drive is beautiful. So um, yeah, it's, we're on the cemetery trail, I guess. Um, <laughs> but we have to get outside. I think that's part of it too, you know get outside every day, exercise, um, try to stay centered. But we have a wonderful governor in Kentucky. He's one of the ones that's making some national press. Well, that's good. Every day at five o'clock, we sit down and have a cup of hot tea or wine with Andy. And he, he's amazing. And he, and um, um, there's a couple other governors. This one, ours is young and we worked for him to get him elected. And, you know, the first thing he says, and he says, everybody say, it, we're in, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this together. He's, um, he's just positive, but yet he's honest about everything. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, and we're in Kentucky. Um, yesterday he showed a mask that the prisoners are making masks in the prisons here. Oh my gosh. And he held what he said, I got the first one and he had it. And he said, the prisoners are making these masks they're getting them first. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so that, you know, every day at five o'clock, we have Andy, and it keeps everything in perspective. He gives an update on what's going on. You know, we've got some issues in nursing homes, we've got other things, but also he's encouraging uh, positive feedback on social media. So he shows a lot of that, and there's a lot of creative kids playing soccer with toilet paper, you know, passing it to each other online, and um, just all kinds of positive things too, so. Um, that's great that's every day and that's who our leader is here i mean that's great yeah it's fantastic so um, well gray that reminds me uh speaking of leaders (laughs) uh, how are you doing there i know that that your governor sort of started off on a really wrong foot how's it going we are uh, you know we have we have continued in georgia i'm gonna pull up the new york times uh real time We've, we've continued our kind of somewhat of our leveling off that some states are starting to experience in, in different times. But of course, you know, in Georgia and in rural areas, you know, our big question in Georgia and in some of the rural areas is starting to emerge is one, how are we going to find all these people? And then second, who's already had it? You know, and I, I think I think that's one of the bigger, bigger questions that a lot of people are starting to kind of, you know, and, and again, this is mostly hearsay. And, and I, I am a, I'm a biology teacher, obviously. And but you know, so you, you, there's there's a lot of this that will remain unknown. I know Skip's talked. I know we've talked about it already, but you know, a lot of people are reporting incredibly similar symptoms for extended period of, of time for since November. And um you know that that's kind of that's kind of where we are here. Um, but Georgia has continued to level off. Um, you know, I, I think I do think for I do think for a lot of Georgians, it was kind of uh, they 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 followed the kind of original guidelines 
Um, you know, we had some mis mishaps in Albany um, very specifically. And then obviously, you know, just in Atlanta with the, with the density. Um, and and I, I, think, I think that's something that we're going to continue to see as far as, as how we deal with this is the, the, the concept of how dense of a population is too dense and and where you know where where is kind of the limit of how many of us should be in in one specific space and and again i don't, I don't mean that necessarily as laws or anything like that but just humans deciding consciously deciding you know i i, I i'm not comfortable living stacked on top of you know 18 other groups um i, I don't know it's it's going to be Whereas here in Macon, you know, we were, you know, in, in even though we're a town of 90,000 people, um, you know, we were able to spread ourselves out pretty naturally, right? And, and that just, that, that kind of structured dynamic has probably played a role. Whereas the people in New York or the people in Atlanta, you know, as soon as they step out the door, they're right on top of one another. Um, so, you know, overall, you know, and I, I, I will, I know he doesn't, and I don't necessarily mean this to any other, uh, I think one of the, one of the best things, just listening to, to talk about Kentucky's governor, I, I think one of the best things, one of the luckiest things that we've had, that's happened so far is Trump allowing the governors to really spearhead their statewide effort. Um, I think that's something to be grateful for. Um, I, you know, it, 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 I would prefer that rather than him running it. Um, it, it just, it seems to, it seems to, it seems to have worked, um, at this point to, to a proper end. Um, I have, what, one thing I wanted to share is and I teach a class in evolutionary psychology with a lot of older, um, seniors and a lot of juniors and seniors and, we, we discuss human personality and we discuss Jung and we, we talk about personality transformation and their end of the year project, which is taken on kind of a much cooler meaning is to write a personality assessment of themselves from their past, from their present and from their future. And we're in the present standpoint right now. And so we're able to talk about everything that they're experiencing in a shifting environment. And uh, yesterday in their class, I, I gave them a, um, I gave them kind of a, a shared document that they all worked on in which we just kind of asked questions about the shifting environment and they didn't, there's no, there was no grade. There was, there's actually no way to track who typed what, but you know, I just, I just asked them questions like, um, consider the new environment, what strengths and weaknesses do you see your personality uh, coming forth in your new environment? How do you see yourself helping? How do you see yourself hurting? Um, and so these, these kids, I mean, they just poured out information. And today I had them go back and read what their classmates had written and respond. And so they're, they're getting this anonymous real-time data and I, I thought, I, you know, actually the thought that just came to my mind is what we're doing on this. And, and then uh, I do this also for during Rebel Wisdom uh, once a week at this point, you know, where you just call and you just check in with other human beings. And you, it's interesting because you're, you're, when, you, when I hear people talk, it's like a running checklist of yes. Yes, I'm experiencing that. Yes, I've felt that. Yes, I've been there. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and it's, it's comforting because we're all, we are, you know, like, like we said about Kentucky, we're all in this together and it's different and we're bringing different perspectives and um, God, I'm blessed to be teaching kids right now. I mean, they're just, it, it's a, it's a blessing to even be around them. Um, so anyway, that's Georgia, Georgia in general. Um, not bad. Kemp's had some mishaps, but you know, I, 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 you know, I think, I think every, um, every part of that uber conservative ilk of, of, I said ilk, I shouldn't have said ilk. This is <laughs> um, 
conservative, overly stated conservative by in name only people, um, they're going to make little mistakes like that. I just, it doesn't seem like they can, it doesn't seem like they can help it. But in their credit, I think, but I think a lot of people who are like that at this point are wise enough to stop making decisions and let people, like, let people make decisions that need to be making them. And I, I think that's happening more consistently. And so I'm very grateful for that. That's great. Well, yeah, it's good to hear that perspective. Um, say Skip sent me a, a chart yesterday that I thought was really helpful. I want to share that. Can you see this screen? And yes. That? So just watch what happens. This is this is the the spread of the coronavirus by day. The days are going across on the bottom of the screen. It's just astonishing how quickly things change. So this is March 8th, uh, 15th, 19th, 22nd, 29th, 31st, and then April 9th. It's, it's just kind of astonishing to see this happen. You realize that China uh, and Singapore, South Korea are dropping to the bottom of the chart as the U.S. climbs. The South, South Korea and Singapore are. Yeah, it'll take a while for China to drop. It has to be overtaken by the U.S. Here comes the U.S. moving in the first place. <laughs> All of a sudden, China starts dropping. So they say. I'm out on that. Sorry. Yeah. So they say. That's true. Anyway, it's a, it's a fascinating thing to watch. And just to realize that this is over a period of four months. Who knows what's going to happen in the future. Kind of makes you a little bit envious of the of the countries that were on top of things, like France. You can see dropping pretty dramatically there. It's an astonishing thing. Well, uh, Joss, are you up? Can you tell us how you're doing? It's like really early in the morning for her. Yes, her. yes so I'm waking up, so I'm not showing my picture yet. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still getting up. But aloha, everybody. Aloha. I'm, I'm Like we can check in with you later after you comb your hair. <laughs> How about Cynthia? How are you doing? Doing good. Yes. Everything here is fine in my world. And um, I live in a very low population density. So we that don't... We don't live on top of each other here in Vermont very much. Mm -hmm. um, I do have uh, st some statistics that I pulled up on Vermont's um, pandemic numbers. So let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's backwards, but. Um, it's okay for us. We can see it. Yeah, you get the general idea. So there's. Um, a total of 628 cases in the, in the state. 
33 people are hospitalized. Um, there's been 23 deaths and um, 777 people have finished being monitoring and 47 people are currently being monitored. So relative to New York, for instance, very low, very low. But everybody is, um, you know, it isn't as it isn't as common to know somebody here who's had the illness. But um, pretty much everybody's following the rules, and um, they're not that hard to follow, you know. And there's no policing of it. We certainly don't get any videos from our mayors telling us, swearing at us and telling us to stay indoors. It's not happening here. Um, that's about it. Um, Oops, you froze up. Yeah, that's the day. But I will have, I did have one incident. My internet is unstable. Yes. Um, <laughs> we just discovered that. Yeah, internet is being very hard pounded by everybody, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm waiting on, uh, on Zoom for an answer to my question uh and i'm 370 in the queue huh. uh, and uh so i don't know if that's actually 370 because it doesn't seem to be changing uh or whether that's your their way of putting you off but they are not help helping today mm. um and so anyway, we can continue to have our, uh, our global check-in because uh, I can always put uh, the session, I can edit and put the session onto YouTube later. So maybe that's what I have to do henceforward. For I have an addendum to my update. <laughs> sure. I now know someone who has died. Oh, you do? Coronavirus. Who was that? Uh, an artist, friend of mine. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so, and also though, uh, I live in Frankfurt, which is uh, they're, they're, the three big cities are Lex Louisville first, then Lexington, and, and then uh, Frankfurt's the capital. And um, I got an email yesterday from somebody and what they're doing, um, you know, they're, they're feeding the children. We have a lot, you know, there's a lot of children that they don't eat if they don't eat at school. And <laughs> then they send them home with backpacks on the weekend with with food um, to get them through the weekend. And so uh, the schools are still feeding people here. A lot of, a lot of people have stepped up for that. And the school bus drivers are driving the routes and dropping food off at the kids they don't need it. And so yesterday I got this really cool email and what they're doing is um, they're raising funds because the library's closed. They're raising funds uh, for donations to also give them a book. And the bookstore is giving 20% off of all the books that are donated for the children. So as they come through for their lunch, then they're going to give them a book to read too. So oh, community cool. level, community level, community level, community level, community yep. level, community yeah. level. Yeah. Yep. Right. Over and over and over and over and over again. Yes. That's awesome. It is awesome. And uh, we have, we have, we have a wonderful community and we don't live on top of each other here either. You know, we were relating to how many people with a, we, maybe we have a hundred people to a square mile in our, where we live and compared to New York city, it, it's just mind boggling. Mm -hmm. What do they have? 60,000 in Manhattan to the square mile or something. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, Anyway, I just wanted to share that. I, I'm afraid I forget. I think it's a wonderful idea, and I'll be curious to see how fast they raise money. I'm guessing it won't take long. I, I, I honestly believe a lot of my anxiety about this whole pandemic was 
kind of lessened very early on in this when our county made the same announcement that you're talking about, about our schools continuing to feed kids and they had a plan and they published the plan and then they they followed through to make sure that they're executing it. I mean, you know, it, it, it is a, it's a very big, right now our, our, I teach at a private, I teach at a, a Catholic school. Um, and, um, sorry, the, the public school kids education piece hasn't been very operative yet. You know, hopefully they're, they're, we're continuing to work on that, but they at least got that getting people fed, taken care of. And, and, you know, there's just, oh, I mean, that's that when people stop eating, that's when things, that's when things can turn, you know, and, and so I just, the awareness of that is so critical to me. Very, very, very focused on that. But I'm, I'm very happy that our, our community did that as well. So I just wanted to add that. <laughs> I, well, go ahead. I wanted to add something over there. It's like, so when I'm listening all of you guys, like when, when, when Gray was saying all this, like I, my heart, like I, I, I was almost like at the edge of not crying because like the immense um, reality is, is like, has thrown back in my consciousness kind of, that we had no plans here at all. Today, one friend of mine, uh, saw somebody walking from her uh, uh, balcony from 8th floor where she was near the highway. Um, and, and she went and che check on them. They, one, one lady with the three daughters under six years, they decided to walk like without, they decided to walk 473 kilometers. Wow. 473 or, or 473? 400, uh, 473, 473. And, wow. and why did they decide to do that? Because they went to attend wedding in Delhi and they were like really poor people and everything shut down and they, they were, and what like they did, didn't have sleepers. One one child who was six year old girl was bleed had a bleeding toe, and and she was like, "We will go. It's okay. Why are you asking questions? If you are, if you want to give us water or biscuits, please. Otherwise, let us go." And she, so my. So basically now my friend has asked, she is living in their bill. Those children and this wo that woman is in the clubhouse of one building. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And there are millions of like that. And I don't know, I'm just, I, I just became very heavy with, with all of this. I, I'm sure it's, uh, it's very tough to take. I imagine, uh, really, yeah. really troubling. Um, hmm. huh. Yeah. Well, that is why we are here. We are, that's, that's exactly that's why, why we are here. That's why we're, we're here. And yeah. so let, let me give you an update. I, ha I have um, uh, not been able to get onto YouTube today, but that's because we're, in, into the security situation now. Maybe we're best served by not trying to get it onto YouTube live, uh, but rather by uh, recording it, which I am doing, and uh, then I can go through and edit it, uh, or at least rough edit it, um, if, I, if I make that my practice, uh, it will, uh, at, at least I can, cut out things like uh, uh, we had the other day and uh, um, 
and I apologize to that for those that are um, those that are offended by it. Um, it was um, uh, it, it was our first time, and I and we were getting used to how to control the the technology, and um, so now we're we're controlling it, and uh, Tim is getting. Uh, he's at least gotten one request from Rwanda, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, I have, um, as may be happening to many of you on Facebook, I, I got about 250 people wanting to be my friend in the last uh, four or five days, and I think most of them are a scam, uh, and. Uh, and so now I've started to send them a message that says, uh, if you want to be my friend, uh, you can get to know me a little bit first before I start to chat with you. I don't have time to just chit chat with, with people who are uh, trying to misuse my Facebook account. But at the same time, I, um, I want to be open to people on Facebook. I've always accepted anybody who um who asked to be a friend on facebook but then very often it ends up uh being kind of a fake account if you go and check the profile of the person usually it doesn't have anything going on and uh so you know that that's a new account that some scammer had uh, created to try to scam people on facebook so when I see that, I always block them uh, immediately. But you know, sometimes sometimes people are genuine, and um, uh, you know, we're very happy to have Kushbu here, definitely because Kushbu is a valuable addition to our group. And so, um, we're I'm trying to find a way to bring people from other countries in, and you know, we'll, we'll see. So my biggest stress in the last week has just been trying to deal with the technology. And I apologize for that. If it's made me a little rough <laughs> the last few days. Do you have any dream updates? Um, I am having dreams, but, um, uh, no, no particular big dream since my uh, best man from my wedding came and landed in a helicopter in front of a group that I was part of, and then he didn't want to talk to me. So I thought that was a good sign because <laughs> he was certainly my God image in that particular dream. And, uh, you know, Nicole had said the other night, well, she had said a couple of weeks ago when I when I said the first time I heard about the coronavirus, I had a voice in my head that said that's going to kill you, and she had written to me right away and heard that and said, uh, you know, it's not going to kill you and you need to create a some sort of group. And meanwhile, Tim and I were talking about creating a group. So we, we've done that. And then I had this other dream where my God image didn't want to talk to me that when it came to get someone else. So, uh, so I no longer think I'm going to die from the coronavirus, but I do think uh, that we're going to be quarantined for 18 months because I don't think uh, we, until there's a vaccine, I don't think we can risk, um, both ourselves and uh, my mother-in-law, who's uh, going to be 90. Uh, her, her 11th birthday happened to be Pearl Harbor Day, if you can imagine. She was born on December 7th, uh, 1930. And, uh, wow. and so her, her uh, 11th birthday was Pearl Harbor Day. And ironically, Debbie's birthday is Nagasaki Day the last the last bombing of World War Two, and uh, so the the two of them bracketed in World War Two in terms of days of the year, but uh, so anyway, um, 
I, I guess I'm going to stop stressing about getting at least this session online. I still have to think about how I'm going to do my uh, meetings and so on. And um, it, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't matter for the advanced group because I wasn't trying to put that online. So it's only the Monday night group that it was uh, maybe an issue for. But if I don't stress about that and we just focus on doing what we are doing, um, so let me put into the um, the chat here on Zoom. Um, oh wait a minute, I'm looking at the wrong screen here. On on chat, I'm going to give you the email address that is now working. Tim has gotten um, so it's global check in dot blog. It's access at global check in dot blog. So if you want to invite uh, some stranger to this group, and we'd like to get people from every as many countries as we can over time, um, you can, uh, and, and it's a stranger that you can't vouch for, give them that email address and, and then Tim will, uh, Tim or one of us will um, vet them before we bring them into the group. And, uh, and then they'll be able to come onto the Zoom conference after we've interacted with them. But I sent that to about 200 people on Facebook the last 24 hours, and we had only one come through that actually wanted to communicate and he hasn't come online today so um so anyway um skip what if uh, you know somebody and you can vet them yourself how would you contact them rather than go well, through that process yeah if if you know people and you can vouch for them then uh, you can give them the uh the regular link and the password uh to register they do they will have to register uh and but registration is no big deal it's just name and an email address is all you have to do as you all know probably and then uh, the password uh, and it's different for each day of the week right so tuesdays once you log on for tuesdays then you won't have to you won't have to register in the future for tuesdays um but you'll have to register for Thursdays and Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. And, um, so, so, and so I don't mind if we don't, we don't mind if you give uh, the information and invite others to join, we'd like to hear from them. Uh, and it, it would be helpful if you send uh, either Tim or me an email, just preparing us for the fact that they'll be joining this uh, global check-in. And um, then, then uh, when they come on, one of our co-hosts or I can admit them. And uh, Cindy, I'm sorry, I, I was a little slow to admit you today be, because I was busy chasing this YouTube thing. Um, but um, It's okay, Skip. I um, had a little rough patch myself with a dream, so. Oh, you did? All right. Yeah. Are well, you, how are you, how's go it going ahead. for you? I'm sorry. Are how's you it going for you? Where Where are you located? <coughs> um, I am in Maryland, and um, I my doctor wants me to go get it <coughs> a chest X-ray today. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I'm I. Uh, was up earlier with that phone call and doing a, um, a different uh, meditation practice and just felt really exhausted and went back to bed. And then I struggled through this dream I had. And when I woke up, it was like five minutes after 11. So oh. um, I just feeling like it, it, it's almost burning to breathe. It, it feels like kind of like my throat is raw but and i'm still partly asleep so <laughs> yeah are cindy are you feeling pressure on your chest are you 
uh, you're feeling burning in your lungs apparently, but are you feeling pressure? Or are you unable yeah, to get, I, get I a have, breath? I I have been feeling like a heaviness in my chest. Um, the burning, it's it's not real bad burning. I'm I'm real sensitive to my how my body feels, and um, it's it's a very vague burning. Um, my my sats have been my oxygen levels have been dropping down um i think the good thing about this is that it's not hitting me real fast um from my interpretation and understanding is that when people have gotten really sick <clears throat> um it hits them like a a wind gust and that blows them over and my symptoms have been um, kind of gradually getting a little more pronounced in the last five or so days. Um, and so it's, you know, I, I'm a nurse, so I'm, you know, very aware of how and when I think I need to reach out. And so I, I did again to my doctor and uh, he wants me to go try to get out and get a, an x-ray today. Um, Cause I, I've had pneumonia in the past. <coughs> <clears throat> and I, I have that reminiscent feeling like, yeah, I remember it used to feel like that. You know, maybe it's not, but uh, just it, it might be good to do this. So somehow I need to try to get out today to get an x-ray. But um, I just had this really strange dream that was very vivid and I, I felt like I don't know. I just felt like my heart rate was up and I was just shaking. And I think that's kind of what woke me up. So oh, okay. how's everybody else doing? Is, is Deborah on the call? Uh, no, Deborah's not here today. Okay. And, uh, probably will have to check, check on her by email because she yeah, wasn't yeah. looking very well the other day. Um, um, I did I get a nice email from Deborah, and it sounded like she was getting along better. Oh, that's good. Well, that's good. I wanted to share when um when my doctor sent me for my chest X-ray when I whatever I had, which was now probably the virus. Uh, she sent me. Uh, she said go to one of the standalone chest X-ray places that it was cheaper. So that's where I went. Yeah, I will not go to an emergency room or a crowded place. No, we got to stay away from no. hospitals right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nancy, how are you doing? Well, I think like everybody, I have my ups and downs. <clears throat> I find myself uh, evolving in this because now what I found that helps me the most is to hold both uh, the probability of my death and my probability of survival together rather than getting pulled only over to the fact that, gosh, you know, today may be my last day or this week may be my last week. But holding, holding uh, both seems to help a lot. And then Jerome suggested shouting uh, to let out the feeling. And what I have found for myself is if I just let out a, a real burst of crying when I'm frustrated, like the other day I was looking for uh, Lysol wipes or Clorox wipes online because there are none in town and there were none on the uh, internet that I could find that couldn't be delivered until maybe June was when uh, they could be delivered and I wasn't even sure they would get to me at that time or whether I'd be alive at that time. And it just, it just was overwhel an overwhelming moment. And I just went and knelt by my bed and just really sobbed out my frustrations, not just for myself, but for all those people that were wandering and not wandering, but uh, the laborers in India that were walking uh, with no jobs and, you know, all of this that has just, that we're aware of just was able to really let that out 
And that, for whatever reason, then I'm integrated again, then I'm strong again, and then I can go forward from there. So that's been really helpful for me. Uh, I think this is the first time in my life I've been able to hold both my death and my life uh, equally without rejecting either. So spiritually, that's been a, a great victory for me. Now, I don't say I can do that every day or every hour of some days, but uh, it's much more stable. And the other thing that is helping me so very much is to shift to love uh, when I feel fear or I feel uh, sorrow, grief, anger, uh, frustration, is to shift into love, uh, my love for uh, others, uh, my love for myself. Uh, and it seems like that love just, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? It takes the toxicity away. It dissolves the toxicity of the all the feelings and thoughts that are just overwhelming and the sense of people around the world in such desperate conditions. So what is your practice for shifting to love? How, how do you go about that? Well, I, I have this experience after years and years of prayer and meditation with the personal God of love uh, that I have kind of an inbuilt, uh, if I can remember, and so I'm choosing to remember more often, this place of uh, oneness with God, the spirit who dwells in the eternal unfolding of all. And I'll shift into that. And then also I've had some new spiritual experiences since this summer that has opened me up to what I'm calling agape which is a sense of an infinite amount of love for all others, and it includes myself as well. And so there's just kind of a, a when, I, when I notice, I try to notice what's happening in my body and in my, in my emotions and so forth. And if I find that I'm getting anxious above normal, which seems to cut me off from that sense of spirit. That's when a signal to me, I have a lot of signals because I'm an emotional person. Uh, these signals now say, go to love, go to that infinite loving of all others, you know, and uh, there I am. Now, if I'm in a state of high anxiety or frustration, I can't shift there real well. I may have to wait until I, I, may, I may have to go to my breathing exercises. And what I found is if you really breathe, like with some yoga pranayama breathing, and Jerome can tell us one good way to do that, um, it energizes the body, all that breath and so forth brings me into my body. Uh, the body is a dampening field for emotion. So when I'm in my body, then those feelings even out, and then I can shift to love at that point. Wow, that's it's so beautiful, Nancy. It's wonderful yeah. to hear you talk about that. Well, it's under extreme pressure and duress that I have been. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I had here. something to... Go ahead, uh, Kiku. So, so when, when uh, Nancy was... Um, was saying about that uh, shift to love and um, and uh, she said that toxicity it takes the toxicity away and so I, I, I got stuck with one word at that time and like after that I wanted to say this, say this. and that that is that love I, I think it purifies you yeah I it was like after listening to you, it is stuck in my head. That I think it purifies you. I don't right. Know. Yeah. Um, well, and, yeah, and that's beautiful. Yeah, part of the exercise that Nancy was talking about is 
you, you actually visualize this love and this white light coming down and descending over you as you're breathing. And you just, you take that in. Uh, a lot of in, in the Qigong, it's they use that energy and then they ground it to the ground. So you connect your feet with the earth at the same time. So this is what uh, the visualization does with the breathing. And uh, what Nancy's able to do is recognize those triggers when she's, uh, her habit pattern, she might do something, then she goes, oh, there's a trigger there. And then she knows to go back and shift at that point. So part of it is recognizing the triggers. Uh, and that's part of, the, uh, you know, our development and so forth. So uh, thanks, Nancy, for sharing that. Yeah, I think um, love is a is clearly a important point, and I just want to mention that in Memories, Dreams, Reflections, the very last page of uh, Dr. Jung's memoir, uh, he talks about it, and um, we haven't gotten to it in our in our Monday night group yet uh, because we're going pretty slow <laughs> in this chapter, but I. Uh, given that the, uh, Nancy has raised love and and so has Kushpu, uh, I, I'd just like to read this one page to you that uh, I think you'll find interesting. And uh, on the, on the um, Dropbox, everybody should have access. If you don't have access to our two Dropboxes, we have two. One is uh, Carl Jung Reading Group and the other is Advanced Reading Group. Um, and they both have uh, a subfolder in them called Collected Works. Now on the Carl Jung Reading Group, um, that has all of the collected works of C.G. Jung plus many, many other books and including this one. Okay, so you can find it right now and, and download it if you want. Anything that you can find, you can download to your own computer. Um, but so I, I'm just going to read this. This is on page 353, just for future reference. At the, and so this is the last chapter of the memoir. It's in a chapter called Late Thoughts. It says, at this point, the fact forces itself on my attention that beside the field of reflection, there is another equally broad, if not broader area in which rational understanding and rational modes of representation find scarcely anything they are able to grasp. This is the realm of Eros. In classical times, when such things were properly understood, Eros was considered a god whose divinity transcended our human limits and who therefore could neither be comprehended nor represented in any way. I might, as many before me, have attempted to do, venture an approach to the daemon whose range of activity extends from the endless spaces of the heavens to the dark abysses of hell. But I falter before the task of finding the language that might adequately express the incalculable paradoxes of love. Eros is a cosmogonus, a creator and father mother of all higher consciousness. I sometimes feel that Paul's words, quote, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have not love, unquote, might well be the first condition of all cognition and the quintessence of divinity itself. Whatever the learned interpretation may be of the sentence, God is love, the words affirm the complexio oppositorum of the Godhead. In my medical experience, as well as my own life, I have again and again been faced with the mystery of love, and I have never been able to explain it. I have never been able to explain what it is. Like Job, I had to lay my hand on my mouth. In my mouth. I have spoken once and I will not answer. Job 44 and following. Here is the greatest 
Here's the greatest and the smallest, the remotest and the nearest, the highest and the lowest. And we cannot discuss one side of it without also discussing the other. No language is adequate to this paradox. Whatever one can say, no words express the whole. To speak of partial aspects is always too much or too little, for only the whole is meaningful. Love bears all things and endures all things. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. These words say all there is to be said. Nothing can be added to them. For we are in the deepest sense the victims and the instruments of cosmogonic love. I put the word in quotation marks to indicate that I do not use it in its connotations of desiring, preferring, favoring, wishing, and similar feelings, but as something superior to the individual, a unified and undivided whole, being a part, being, being a part man cannot grasp the whole. He is at its mercy. We may assent to it or rebel against it, but he is always caught up by it and enclosed within it. He is dependent upon it and is sustained by it. Love is his light and his darkness, whose end he cannot see. Love ceases not. Love ceases not. Whether he speaks with the tongues of angels or with scientific exactitude traces the life of the cell down to its uttermost source, to its uttermost source. Man can try to name love, showering upon it all the names at his command, and still he will involve himself in endless self-deceptions. If he possesses a grain of wisdom, he will lay down his arms and name the unknown by the more unknown, ignotum per ignotius, that is, by the name of God. That is a con that is a confession that is a confession of his subjection, his imperfection, and his dependence, but at the same time a testimony to his freedom to choose between truth and error. So sorry, I, that breaks me up every so often. I have some uh, thought, uh, let's see, Nancy's still there, um, about how to get to that place, and Kushbu can certainly talk about it, and Tim could too, but um, in some sense, I've never had the problem of how to get to this place because I've always, because I'm so far out on the intuitive scale, I've always just been able to close my eyes and be there. Um, but it's the, it's the place that Dr. Jung talks about in the Red Book where he was looking for his soul. And um, when, he, when he started through the Red Book visioning period, uh, he wanted to come back to his soul and understand his own soul. And um, he sat in his study for 25 days uh, before his soul started to communicate with him. And he had to sit quietly and just wait patiently for it. And um, it's a place in the psyche that is like the desert. And he talks about this in the early part of the Red Book about uh, going into the desert. And it is a deserted place. It's, but it, I mean, the way I envision it is if you imagine um, the universe when you're outside on a purely clear night and uh, you can see many stars in the heavens and that sort of thing. And, and you feel that spaciousness of, of the universe going on infinitely far. Um, for me, that's what it's like that, you know, I, I just find myself in a desert where there's, there's nothing built up, there's no vegetation. Um, and there's this 
very broad sky. And then if you get to that place, that's a meditation place for me too. But um, if you get to that place and you're not doing Tibetan style meditation, which I sometimes do, but you're trying to communicate with your soul, uh, in Tibetan meditation, you, you make everything go away. If something comes into your field of consciousness, you're, you're supposed to push it away. Um, but in what Dr. Jung did with the Red Book was the opposite of that, which was to accept the things that come and whatever comes, um, you can communicate with it, whether it's a snake or a, or a house, I mean, it might talk to you, or a rock, a rock might talk to you. So, um, if you can find that place within yourself, uh, it seems to me then you're, then you're there and eventually your soul will start to talk with you, okay, which is, sort of the opposite of Tibetan meditation in which you push anything away that comes up into your meditation, but this is, this is accepting it and accepting it as part of your, yourself. And, you know, whether it's a devil or a, or a, uh, whether it's a devil or, you know, your best friend or whatever it is, you talk with it, but remembering as in dreams that everything that's in a dream or a vision is you, it's from you, it's part of you. And um, so if you have a, if you have a devil come up, just remember that that's part of you and it's part of your shadow and something that you have to deal with. And I, as most of you know, I, I did have a, a vision of Mephistopheles one time that was very powerful. And, um, and so, you know, you have to figure out how to deal with these situations when they come up. But uh, does that resonate at all, uh, Nancy or Kushbu? Yeah, I, I'm like, I am writing it down. Like, I'm writing it down. It is resonating that much. So... <laughs> I'm glad, yeah. to, I'm glad to hear that. Um, this is Cindy. Yes, Cindy. Um, that sounds, it, it was a very, very wonderful description. Thank you. Um, I wanted to also add in with, with um, maybe advanced, advanced meditation practices, um, one would follow the exact um, method that you're describing but in generality um, from my understanding um, that when in that particular type of place that you're describing and one sees either visions or thoughts come that one does not allow themselves to uh, I guess grasp onto it to judge if it's good or if it's bad or to push it away, that it will dissipate. And I think by, um, in order to push something away, it has to kind of remain. And in order for it to remain, one has to allow their thoughts to grasp onto it. And from my understanding is that, um, in Tibetan meditation, Mahayana or Mahamudra meditation, we just notice it. We don't judge it that it's good or bad. Um, but I would imagine if it's a recurrent, um, recurrent thought or recurrent vision, that there would be some antidotes to that, and that that might you know be more akin to what you're talking about. So I just kind of wanted to. Add yeah. that in. <laughs> okay. in there. Well, I, I agree with you on Tibetan med meditation, uh, Tibetan style Buddhist meditation, um, and mm -hmm. and as I as I said, I think this is on the opposite end of that spectrum. And what Dr. Jung was doing was 
uh, if you read the Red Book, and good chance you haven't done, Cindy. Uh, but um, that the Red Book represents his visioning period, uh, which lasted for five years. And um, what he was doing was communicating with his deep unconscious, with with his self, with his God image, and and he was uh, getting wisdom from it. And so in a, in a very unique and archetypal way, and so it's, it's being receptive to what comes up. It's being receptive to whatever uh, comes up in your dreams because your dreams are, are communicating something to you that, um, that your psyche thinks you need to know. Um, and you know your your psyche is doing all kinds of things every day every second of the day it's you know it's uh making you breathe and your heartbeat for among other things and so when it presents you a dream or a vision it's giving you a message it thinks you need to know um and <laughs> so only you can decipher that message and by reflecting on it, uh, you can decipher it. And uh, so when I, <coughs> sorry, when the, when the red book first came out, I, uh, I heard some, that somebody was tweeting out the verses of the Bible, one verse at a time. And so I said, well, that's an interesting idea. Uh, maybe I could tweet out the red book and, but the thing about Twitter is that uh, if you, if you put it in in correct order, then on your timeline, it's going to be on re in reverse order because the most recent thing will be on top of your timeline. And so I said, okay, so I'm going to take some of these paragraphs that are just filled with wisdom and I'm going to tweet them out sentence by sentence in reverse order um, so that uh, then in my timeline at the end every sentence is, has wisdom in it and is archetypal in many ways in, in the red book um, but I just so I started to I would do like five sentences at a time or one paragraph at a time and so I would start with the last sentence and then the next one and the next one and what I found out is that the Red Book makes absolutely the same amount of sense if you read it backwards. <laughs> it has just as much wisdom in it if you read it backwards. And um, you might want to try that someday if you have a Red Book. And, and uh, you actually, you have a Red Book if you uh, go on to the Dropbox because it's, it's there. But... Um, if you if you read it backwards, it makes as much sense going forward as back, backward as forward. Um, so anyway, that. Uh, but I it it only dawned on me really in this conversation, Cindy, that that Buddhist meditation is really the opposite of what Jung is doing really the other end of the spectrum. That's my perspective anyway. Any, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Oh, uh, Dr. Dr. Young, uh, uh, he actually, uh, he talked back to him. So he communicated with him right. as, and, as he approached them. So that's a different approach. Right, because they <laughs> present themselves as beings, right. at, you know, because that's how it can communicate with you, get a message through to you as a being. And so he was, he was actually talking to them. Yeah, he argued with them. He wasn't going to have it, you know. And uh, so he wanted to have it out with them. So, mm. But there is a danger in some forms of meditation. Uh, if you see evil, you do not want to take that on because it can be an archetype uh, that can grab you. And so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have to pull you out if you're not careful from a... If, yeah. Uh, from that standpoint, so I'd be very careful about uh, those types of images, right. and you don't want to dissociate uh, when these come through, uh, because you can't just dissociate from that. How would you define that, Jerome? You mean from... How would you defi right. define dissociation? How would you describe it? 
uh, the dissociation would be uh, what I would call, maybe Josh can help me on the definition of dissociation. Can you do that, Josh? Well, dissociation would be more like disconnect. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, but you know, uh, Skip, I, uh, all that you said resonates with me and the, the Red Book stuff uh, resonates with me. And I also um, resonated with Nancy and her experience and Jerome, um, what you said about dissociation with um, things that come out that are extremely negative and quite powerful in the, in the sense it can grab your psyche, so to speak, and um, spiral you down into fear. So yeah. one has to be um, cognizant about that possibility. And um, uh, the spiritual way that I kind of handle that for myself, because everybody has a unique experience, including with dreams. Dreams are very personal. So one dream interpretation from another, um, it's all inclusive. Um, but for the person who is the, the dreamer, you have to make a choice of whether you, um, if, if it resonates or not with you. So when somebody uh, helps you to tr you know, try to interpret it for you and so forth, you have to feel it in your heart of intelligence, whether that resonates with you or not, and you know, take it in. But for myself, because I too have gone through some mystical experiences, if you call it mystical, it's, you know, mystical could be, you know, again, it's a terminology and a label. Um, it's, one would say miracle, um, uh, or the other person would say something else. Um, but it was a feeling of an expansion um, and being connected with everything. And, and it was just a cool feeling. It's, it's like uh, you you wish wish to be in it as as long as possible you can, but it was like a glimpse, as if the goddess or God in me wanted to um, give me a glimpse of what I was seeking, which was that um, connection with love. Well, whatever that love is, it, it's hard to define because um, as one. Um, a Buddhist uh, parable of wisdom would say, you know, once a student asked, um, how, do, how can you tell love or what, what is love? And um, the, the master would say, um, what well, can you describe to me the, the fragrance of a rose? And then, well, do you know the fragrance of a rose? And then the student would say, yes. Well, then describe it to me in words. And then the student would be kind of like stunned because pen in hand, uh, you, you can't describe it. It's, it's uh, indescribable. Um, so that's, that's the feeling I, I get. It's a feeling and uh, it's almost indescribable. But um, how I deal with the negative things that come in my mind is sometimes I well because I grew up Catholic and um, but I'm now expansive in my um, all knowing of you know love is just more than Christianity. I would say to myself, um, this if wh whatever comes that is not of love, um, please leave my consciousness. I ask you to leave. And oftentimes it just disappears. And then it's almost like magic, it just goes away. So, you know, you kind of have to um, choose to keep it or not to keep it. Yeah, I, I, and that did work for me. I mean, the one time that I was faced with Mephistopheles, it was quite a dangerous experience actually, because uh, I was going on a super highway at. 65 miles an hour and all of a sudden I have this vision of Mephistopheles sitting next to me in the car and it was I, I was obviously in trauma because um, after a lovely evening with my daughter on her 22nd birthday uh, she says well dad I'm sorry to say this to you but I think you're going to hell 
and I was I was just super angry about that. I, I was furious at the people that would teach a child to say such a thing to a parent. But all of a sudden, boom, there's Mephistopheles. And so I, I just cut the Faustian bar bargain with him. I said, uh, okay, you can have my eternal soul uh, on my death on condition that none of my daughters think that of me for the rest of my life. And boom, he went away. He never came back. It, it, it was that quick. But, you know, you can imagine somebody that's not familiar with what these things are, you know, you could easily drive off the road uh, at 65 miles an hour having that kind of an experience. And I, I was lucky. I wanted to share something about the Red Book that I have. Um, I'm very visual, as you can tell. I'm, you know, um, I keep it open now. It's very comforting for me, and it's almost a subliminal thing. I love the drawings that he makes in there. And I just have it where I can see it coming and going as I come and go into the home. And I change the pages out. I, I turn the pages, but it's open all the time where I can see it. And it's, I find it really comforting. And I know sometimes I just glance at it and sometimes I take a longer time. But for me, just having that book open um, brings a sense of peace. That's cool. I like that idea. It's not, not too dissimilar from having the Bible open on the altar. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Well, it's a beautiful book. Besides what it says, the, the drawings I find are just incredible. I love to look at them. Yeah. Say, Penelope has come on board. Do you want yeah. to check in with us, Penelope? Maybe she stepped away for a minute. I feel human again after 28 days. So I just yeah. went out mask free, free and smiling at people. <laughs> and um, I did tell a few people as I was standing in a few queues that I've had the virus and I'm free of it. And um, I think I gave a few people hope. And there was one woman in a store saying that her sister got a really nasty cough and she was really worried about her health. And I said, well, you need to get some breathing exercises going, which have been going around proper hospital stuff that I've seen on the breathing, which is a cycle of breath of five breaths and holding the breath and then coughing. Um, and I've been doing that because I had a bit of mucus coming off my chest. I've ne I don't have that. I used to smoke cigarettes, actually, up until 2014. I used to smoke 40 cigarettes a day. <laughs> Good Lord and drink a bottle of wine a night in my disassociation of life. And I used to run my, my half a million pound business and spend it all on wine and cigarettes. Um, for um, many years I did that. And um, that was my way of operating in the world and it felt safe. And I thought when I stopped drinking actually, my disassociation that I was gonna fly when I stopped drinking, but I didn't. What happened is I stopped drinking that bottle and a half of wine a day and I ended up having anxiety and panic attacks to such a point that I couldn't function anymore. I thought I couldn't drive my car. I thought I couldn't, I couldn't get in the bath because I thought I was going to die even in a little bit of water. I was just, I went, I lost the plot basically for about five years after stopping drinking. So fascinating stuff on disassociation. But I'm now I disassociate with social media, but I'm, I'm useful to the world. So I don't mind. That's my disassociation now. I quite enjoy it. I allow it because it's, I have a purpose. Um, but I feel good today. And I said to the woman, get some zinc. I've heard, saw Trump, I'm not political, but he did, he did mention the word zinc I heard over the last 24 hours. And I thought, oh boy, boy, I should have his job because I knew about that before he did. <laughs> <laughs> zinc. He's a Gemini as well, I'm a Gemini. Uh, so we talk a lot. So he's definitely got the gift of the gift of the gab, has he not? So oh, he's definitely got the gift of the gab. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
He's got right. his Mars actually. He's he's got Mars on his ascendant, so he's, he's he's there's a lot of anger he's hiding there. I tell you. <laughs> Well, I, I love that. Let's all disassociate from the news. <laughs> you know, I don't so. watch it. it in news feeds, it's quite funny. I haven't watched the news or read a newspaper since I stopped drinking in 2012. I haven't listened to the radio or picked up a magazine or newspaper. So I, so I disassociated from, I, st I stopped my alcohol and disassociated from the world, which was very necessary for me. I can um, cope with it now. Yeah, that's interesting. One time I I didn't look at, we didn't turn on the news for one year, Debbie and I. We just didn't watch for a year. When we turned it back on, um, it was, uh, nothing had changed. <laughs> the news was the same. And uh, David White, who's a famous Irish poet, uh, who's my age kind of and was popular back during the Robert Bly men's movement period. Um, he said, uh, don't look at newspapers for the news. You can't get it there. You only get it from poems. You only get the real news from poetry, poems. So I, I went through a stage of poetry where I was purging and it was very, very good for me. There was a lot of Lilith in it and um, in my poetry. There was a lot of like dagger and twist of public display. If I go back on my page, I was quite, I think I horrified a lot of people. And in 2017, I was with graphically, um, not awful, but I choose pictures and then I'd write some poetry that was very very deep and but very fruitful to me because that's when I started using my voice and speaking up I was pushing the boat out on that and I really enjoyed it it's, so it's, if you want to scroll back on my page if any of you are my friends Joss I did send you a request so I don't know if you saw that if you wish but I think um I think that um I definitely it's good to be able to see that progression in myself even with Skip inviting me on a year ago, actually, is our, um, how long I've known you, Skip, because it was a year ago you invited me on, um, on to speak on PTSD. You found me on YouTube and you commented and you invited me to speak and you encouraged me, you mentored me to be a bit braver on stuff. So I thank Skip a lot for his encouragement of me. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, me, 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 meanwhile, I'm uh, I'm busy looking at the Zoom stuff. I finally got the somebody answered me on chat and they told me what to do. But I'm having. Uh, Penel, can I speak to Penelope real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to shut my my video for a minute so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, Penelope, yes. Um, Please correspond with me. I think you might have my email, and um, if not, I'll tell Skip to. Yes, I don't her. think I have yeah. it. I don't. Oh, you do. I don't think I have your email. No. So oh, that's... okay. Uh, I'll have Skip give you my contact information because I, I prefer not to <laughs> put things on chat and. Um, yeah, uh, I get you. Yeah, and things like that. But yes, of course, I would love to connect with you. I prefer email. I prefer email. I mean, threads, I get annoyed with Messenger because it's just, it gets out of hand and I get irritated with Messenger a lot, me anyway. So it's yes. not the ideal way to communicate properly, mm. in my view. So. Um, but Tim, I, um, Tim, I just want to um, give a quote here from um, a fellow artist, but of course he's on Across the Veil. But uh, a quote, he says, I tell you, the more I think, the more I feel that there is nothing more truly artistic than to love people. And uh, because that, I, I thought of that quote because, uh, and I wanted to share it, I forgot to share it with um, you and everybody um, in your advanced reading group yesterday. But uh, I thought that was actually, um, uh, one of my favorite quotes by Vincent van Gogh. And uh, he's a, 
actually he's one of my favorite artists too of course now i'm now now i'm seeing your art artistry i mean i could see some similarities to you and vincent that's that's a beautiful quote i totally agree with that and uh it kind of reminds me of a a little homework assignment that i want to give everybody um this comes from, I used to serve on the Montana Arts Council, which is this kind of a state, uh, statewide um, citizens council that distributes money that the state legislature earmarks for art development in the, in the state of Montana. Anyway, we were having a meeting one time and somebody said, Everybody on the panel should write a six word epitaph. And so for me, this was a really touching and profound experience. And so I want to give that assignment to everybody on the panel here. Um, sometime in the next week or two, write yourself a six word epitaph. The six words that are going to appear on your gravestone or the equivalent thereof. What does epitaph mean? I'm, I'm not familiar with that word. Epitaph. It's the, um, it's the text that is written on your gravestone. Okay. So when you die, what are the six words you want to leave behind that exemplify your character or what you believe in or what you think is most important in the world? Does it have to be six? Six. <laughs> six. Oh, okay. I've got one. She ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> She's done. <laughs> well, well, somebody it's put on there. Somebody put on there is here lies no one. That's four words. <laughs> <laughs> There's some pretty good ones out there. I know one that says, um, "I told you I was sick." <laughs> <laughs> this is so good to hear laughter <laughs> that's good oh there is some shaming going around with you know there are there is actually i saw some there is some shaming going around of people who actually are saying that they have the virus people are like a little bit you know it's interesting to watch on social media a little bit of shaming Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it. Even of uh, 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 hospital staff, like when they are, yeah, who are not working in the quarantine, like anything related to quarantine, but people are freaking out and, and there's a lot of shaming. There's a yeah. lot of, uh, yeah. I saw it in somebody's eyes yesterday when I was in a queue. I said, oh, wow, I'm free. I had it for 28 days and they just looked at me like... I've never been so healthy in all my life. I feel like jumping for joy. I feel so happy today. I've never experienced such happiness in my life. <laughs> so well, con con congratulations, <laughs> Penelope. Congratulations on your recovery. And it's because, as I had mentioned before, it's about the contrast, about the suffering and joy. It's the contrast. Yeah. And so you really, really get to appreciate what was lacking before and what you gained now. Yeah. And that's why, that's the, I hate to say it, but that's the beauty of the coronavirus. And I say that with de delicacy because it's not uh, something that I would wish for, for, for anyone. Yeah, I think when you have it, it's like the sensitivity, because I've seen people say, oh, it's just a cold. And that's, that, you know, it's so important not to be dismissive of people right now. There's no way of getting tested or we're given it a list and then we're all going to be different in our response. And, but all I know is, is that, you know, I wasn't well, I would be fascinated to have a blood test just to see, they're not, you know, just to see if, um, if I was correct in my assumptions, but in my opinion, my gut instinct would be that, you know, I've lived 53 years on planet earth and I've never experienced anything like it in my life. So I would assume that the, the depth of, feeling that it was death on the doorstep, that feeling of death, definitely I've not experienced before. You know, I have not experienced that personally before. 
Well, I've always felt that the best way to prepare for life is to really live life and really appreciate and savor every day, that every day is a bonus, every day is a gift. And it's sometimes very difficult when we're so busy and caught up with uh, the quote, busy, busyness of life. <clears throat> and this coronavirus has really not only flattened, the, we're trying to flatten the curve, but it really has flattened us back to, you know, the stillness and like what, uh, you know, we're talking about that it's in the stillness that we become more creative and more in touch with our creator. There are apparently there are three. I mean, there's somebody I follow on YouTube called London Real, a guy who interviews a lot of good people, actually. And he was saying, I think it's about three billion that are grounded. So three billion of us are grounded. I don't know what's happened with the other, what we got, eight billion of us just. So... Yeah. The, the others, I mean, I don't know what the, the, the deal is there. Every country's dealing with it slightly differently, but um, that's a lot of people. Three billion. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people, too, are maybe not even aware because, you know, we're so fortunate we have communication as we do now, but there's a lot of people out there that have no communication and um, <laughs> so it goes to show. Joss, I would say as well, um, I found a wiki, um, Wikipedia, I found, I'm gonna read it after this um, chat today. It's on viruses, it's the social understanding of viruses. So if we, do, if we went back you know, to the, the plague and all of these other um, viruses that have wiped people out, that um, the reality is it has happened before and we think 120 years ago, we didn't have air, aircraft. You know, 20 years ago, we didn't have Facebook 20 or YouTube. Yeah. So we're in a, you know, we're, we're evolving and then we're, we're just getting to a different level where we can see so graphically what's going on. And you know, 200 years ago, if something like this happened, you know, how would have people have known? You know, it would have just been recorded. Yep and then passed on as history at some point. So I think it's, there's a lot of good stuff about this, but I'm not gonna, you know, I'm very aware of the, the, the collective pain. And so I'm not, you know, I'm very, I, I'm choosing my words, as you say, just to not, you know, like you're doing as also, I'm very, I see the good stuff, but I also see the reality for some that are not in the position I am in and I am not, I'm going to be aware of that because there are some, I don't know, in, in London, we'd say cocky, you know, where people are cocky or not humble. Maybe you say cocky yeah. people who, you know, think that it's beyond them. Well, a few weeks ago, I was one of those people on, an, on the underground thinking somebody was coughing near me, you know, maybe a month or so, but two months ago, a hacking cough. And I was, you know, I didn't think that I'd be coming down with anything like this, you know, at that time. I really you know, it was a, a sort of, we have this idea that, you know, death doesn't happen to us, it happens to other people. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting thought. So it's woken me up um, to a deeper level of, you know, what my place is in, in the world and what my time is now to be used for. And also releasing a lot of my trauma, but that shows up in my astrology quite deeply of my astrology chart. It shows up anyway that that's where I'm at psychologically emotionally, physically, spiritually, in so many ways, the symbolism is showing that this is the point I'm at in my life anyway. So it's all about timing, you know, through the, for me anyway, it's perfect. But for somebody else, it's gonna be completely different. As you said, we're all gonna take this differently because we're all at different points in consciousness as well. Yes. Gosh. I wanted to say I'm wearing a Hawaiian dress for you today. <laughs> I know, I noticed that. That's, That's wonderful. <laughs> I was thinking about that too, but I woke up so, you know, uh, it's hard at five in the morning. <laughs> so I'm just in my uh, kind of like athletic uh, top here. But I wanted to say, Tim, I think that's an excellent idea about writing an epitaph um, because it um, brings to focus because of 
what we're going through this pandemic um, the possibility of our um, our passing and it's it's actually quite very real and um, but we should always be thinking about the end game the end point because that uh, brings to mind the um, the the temporalness of our our lives we're we're here on earth temporarily and what are we going to do with our precious time on earth so um i think it's a wonderful um, um assignment for us to do and i noticed that there was a lot of humor and and um joking around and i think that's absolutely wonderful because it's humor that's a another um way of therapy to lift our spirits because the higher the vibrational frequency, which is to me joy, the, the closer we are to God. This is the way they communicate. Can I um, add as well something over the years, for about five years, I followed a gentleman called Dr. David Hawkins. I don't know if anybody's heard that name um, at all. And um, he wrote books in consciousness and he lived in Sedona. I think he passed when he was about 86 or something like that. But he um, play, he came up with a game called Then What? So if you're having a really bad time, um, for instance, if you, you know, you're afraid of losing your job, so the, the idea would be, well, then what? Then I won't have money to pay my bills. Then what? Then I, you know, then I won't be able to feed my children. Then what? Then I'm going to, you know, end up as a bad lady on the street. Then what? Then I'll, <laughs> then I'll starve to death. And then what? And then what? And then I'm dead. And then what? <laughs> so all of this idea that we we play, we cling so tightly onto the idea of life. But you know, the reality is, it's like we're all out of here at some point. So it's a really funny, you know, this going to bed thinking, oh my god, I can't breathe. It's like I'm, you know, what's what? Because that was real. But I have allergies normally, you know, in the spring. And today I don't have one. So I'm thinking, oh my God, I've taken so much zinc and vitamin C over the last month that maybe I've wiped out my allergies with um, this, um, you know, with this virus. And the other thing, which is amazing, I will share, which is, you know, not something that I was going to share it. For over the years since I stopped drinking, I've not been able to go to bed until, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning because I have all these reasons that I have nightmares and out of body experiences. Now, since this virus, my sleep pattern has completely aligned. So where most people who are getting it are staying up, staying up all night and then sleeping all day, I've completely flipped. So now I'm sleeping all night and I'm awake all day through the virus. So it's like it's aligned me with time again. So I've had some real gifts from this virus, I tell you. Thank okay. you, Corona. Wow, that's, that's great. That's that is that is that is exactly what I am like. Like today only I recognize that. Oh my God! I'm looking at the clock again. You know, I have that physical clock, like not in the mobile. Um, so on the wall, and and I realize that. Oh my God! And every day morning is like I have one favorite DJ. It's uh, his name is Akira the Dawn. So he has this. Uh, Compilation of Alan Ward, Jordan Peterson, um, Joko, and a lot of other other philosophers like that. And he's a DJ. He's a very good DJ, and he's coming live every day. So I work out, I dance like like every day morning, early morning, like like six thirty to eight thirty. All my dogs are playing around, and I'm like, oh my god, some dreamland this is. So <laughs> so it's I I, I am. Yeah, like I, I'm loving it, and uh, yeah, I'm loving it. I think that is that is what I. And also, I, I, I feel you. I feel you, sister. <laughs> yeah, and also the self care, like you know, being able to you know be without makeup for days, which I was, and then you know just being able to really self care and really look after my you know like brushing my teeth much slower and doing everything more, and flossing my teeth and just really looking at myself and checking at, you know, what, what just really 
being in touch with my body. It's like instead of running around like a headless chicken, we've all been running around like head, not all of us, but most of us have been running around like headless chickens. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. It's just the rug has been pulled on all of us and we're just having to sit here and go, okay, who am I? <laughs> but clearly, <laughs> it's not going to be the experience for everybody. So I'm not going to be suffering. One of the things we've done, um, having been sick so early, um, we we sort of had our affairs in order. We've been meaning to update our wills and all that. So um, we had a trip planned to the beach, which of course got canceled in April. But we went ahead and we've gotten everything together for our children, so nobody has to look for anything. It's all in a in a fireproof box. And in Kentucky, they changed the law where we we updated our wills and we did it all online talking to the attorney, sending documents back and forth. And originally they said, well, come on down to the parking lot. We'll have two witnesses meet you at the car and we'll, you can sign them in the car. We did it all virtually. We did it on our iPhones. We had the documents, we signed them. Then we put them through the slot in his office and we'll get them back notarized. But my gift to my children is I haven't cleaned the basement out yet, but I, I, I need to do that. I don't, but we're, we're prepared. We're not scared. We have plenty of food. We have all that planned. And we're just going about every day and doing the best we can, you know. I like to, that. Prepared, not scared. That's a good Prepared, point. not scared. On both sides, you've been talking about uh, living and dying. And I think for us as well, we've come to terms with both of it. I mean, if there's an, atom if there's an atomic bomb, take me out. I, I don't even camp. I won't do well if it's Mad Max. Just, you know, I'm 73. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> there's, but, there's your epitaph. Um, living and dying, prepared, not scared. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have to do it now. <laughs> well, this reminds me, uh, just the general discussion reminds me of this beautiful film that uh, I think is a German film came out in the early 70s or late 60s called Wings of Desire. And it's about this, um, it's about the difference between being dead and being alive. Um, it's, it's a story of these two angels that are, um, that are uh, negotiating the, the veil, kind of. I'll put a link on the on the chat and you can see for yourselves. But it just, I thought it did a really good job of making it apparent that those of us who still have bodies, who get to live in nature on this earth, have a kind of uh, blessed um, immediacy that the angels don't get to participate in. And all of this business of every day having to get up and brush your teeth and figure out the, the problems of life is just such a blessing when you realize that most of the people who have lived in this world uh, no longer get to participate in that way and that we will join that tribe before too long. So I think, Nancy, you've been doing really good work in, in uh, thinking about the difference between a future being alive and a future being dead. I think we all need to spend a little bit more time cogitating over what that is like. Maybe on the tail of that, I'll ask a question. Well, I should probably not do this today because we should probably wrap up soon. Yeah, but maybe next time I'll ask a question about what has changed for you since this catastrophe started a month or two ago. Yeah. Well, um, by by the way, um, uh, I I've been fighting through this stuff with Zoom for the last hour, as you probably have figured out. Um, but uh, Cynthia Day, who was with us earlier. Um, had to go do something with her car, so that's why she dropped out. But she 
promises to be here Sunday, and uh, we will be on on Saturday as well. I think I gave the links for Saturday, uh, but let me also add the links for Sunday. Um, uh, so up up about oh that yeah um, yeah I sent that to all panelists at eleven forty six uh, my time um, that was Saturday but the Sunday link is also there uh, in case you want to join um, and uh, I, I really think this has been a very rich conversation and maybe it's been enhanced by me not. <laughs> <laughs> not being involved. <laughs> it, it reminds me. It, it reminds me a little bit of Downton Abbey when uh, someone in Downton Abbey said uh, um, said that Downton Abbey is like a swan. It's everything is calm, cool, and collected uh, above the surface, but down below, <laughs> where all the all the work is being done, and there's a lot of paddling going on. So. I'm afraid I was down in the uh, in the boiler room. Uh, for well, much we of... did miss you, though, Skip. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> miss me. <laughs> no, uh, we did miss you. I did. I missed you. I was going. I missed first. you as well. As well. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you well, you well. aren't missed. You're good. Cheers. Well, I've been, I've enjoyed this. Uh, uh, I got something to say to Tim. Yes. yes. Um, with regard to the movie, I'd like to see if I can find that on YouTube, but something I posted yesterday, which is in alignment with what you're saying, with regard to, it's by Jung, yeah? And I posted it with a picture, and it's, he says, I don't know where it's from, but it, it's quoted on um, a few places. The angels are a strange genius, genius. They are precisely what they are and cannot be anything else. They are in themselves soulless beings who represent nothing but the thoughts and intuitions of their Lord. Did you get Beautiful. that? Yeah. So that soullessness, I don't take it literal, but I can see what you were saying like that, you know, that there's a lot of soul in brushing our teeth and making our coffee and, and you know, being here, there's so much soul. It's it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, and we we get to share that with each other. I mean, who who is who does not brush their teeth? You know, <laughs> yeah. about that in a moment of of kind of domestic boredom and doing something like taking out the garbage or brushing my teeth or um, you know closing up the building at night. I think about all those people around the world that are doing the same thing. It's the chopping wood and carrying water. Yeah. And the moon, I love the moon because we, we all see it. We can't look at the sun, can we really? We can see it, but we can't look at the sun. I tried the other day. It's, I scared myself <laughs> taking a picture of it. Um, but um, the moon, you know, the moon was so beautiful last night. It was almost a peach color in the sky. It was just, and I just thought, and then I'm speaking to somebody in, you know, in Manchester who's, you know, the other side of the UK saying, oh, can you see the moon? And then I'm speaking to somebody in California saying, take a picture of the moon, you've got to see the moon. So we've all got this beauty that we can all see the same moon, you know, we're all, and that moon is like, it's full of emotion and water and mother and mother earth and stuff. Uh, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Um, Penelope, several days ago, I was outside and actually, giving away tree stumps to my neighbor and actually had a, a little fire in my fire pit that kind of spilled over onto my dried grass. And so that was an experience I've never had. But um, I noticed as it got a little bit further into the day that, and it was a cloudless sky, that you could see the sun and the moon at the same time. And it, and it was coming into the full moon. It was just gorgeous. And I, I swear, I've got a relationship with the moon like nobody else has. That's how it feels to me. Um, and so anyway, I just wanted to share that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, and Penelope's been sending me the pictures of the pink moon. So uh, <laughs> that's uh, pretty amazing. Um, so, um, 
anyway, uh, I think I might have solved this problem. I hope uh, the chat finally lit up about a half an hour ago. And uh, so I was chasing the chat with the guy on Zoom. Um, but Tim, I just wanted to mention that Tim had sent this, uh, this name of this film called Wings of Desire. And he, I, I think you didn't realize that you sent it to me privately, Tim, maybe. And, and so I've put it out so everybody can see it. Oh, great. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So uh, before I shut down, um, we can just go around the room and ask uh, Kushbu to, um, to uh, give us a blessing here. But um, just, if you will, go over to the chat and look through and see if there's anything you want to capture uh, from the chat and, and do a cut and paste okay. into your into your text editor or something so that because once i shut the meeting down then the chat goes away so uh, Jerome if, wanted to say something yeah go ahead Jerome. oh i was just going to say i uh, uh, enjoyed this uh, whole conversation and uh it, what we're talking about is it's we're we're in sold as we go through life is the way i like to look at it so yeah. Uh, and that's appreciating the beauty and you're coming from the soul and your approach and you're not diverting away from it. But then I also want to mention that uh, uh, Skiff is, uh, and if you've read Peter Kingsley's Cataflac, uh, it's an, a book that he wrote, uh, and he talked about uh, uh, Carl Jung and Henry Corvin. Henry Corvin was a Sufi uh, master and Young really felt that he was really communicating when he was sitting down talking with Henry Corbin. And he said, the supreme joy to dialogue, which is, I can't say, anybody knows French, but it's the supreme joy we experience in having a dialogue. And I, I think I felt that today and really appreciate that. And versus separation and monos pros mono, which is going at it and feeling alone. So. Great. Yeah. yeah. I may, um, <laughs> I, I have to go back and look at Corbin, but I, I just, I, I have so much Jungian stuff to do because he wrote so much that I may never get back to it in this lifetime. But I, I just wanted to mention about uh, before death and after death and uh, one of the big motivations for me to um, to do this YouTube channel and these sessions has been uh, because I there have been some things that I wanted to share with my uh, grandchildren and um, I rarely get a chance to um, uh, to talk to with them and it's now going to be even harder for the next 18 months not to mention the fact that one of them was only born three months ago and so uh, so it's a little hard to speak with her at the moment uh, but um, but that I mean I've been trying to leave, leave behind a body of work that uh, on YouTube that my grandchildren will find, uh, you know, even if, even if I don't get a chance to tell them about it. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, you can think about doing that sort of thing. Obviously, uh, all of you, when I post these things on YouTube, this, this becomes a, a legacy of yours as well. But, uh, when you've contributed to these sessions. Um, but, um, you know, obviously Dr. Young basically wrote constantly because I think he hand wrote or he dictated uh, basically everything that he ever published. I think he hand wrote it mostly. Um, and, uh, 
he probably did dictate memory streams reflections but you know if you can imagine him sitting there at his desk every night we didn't have television or radio except in the later years um you know handwriting out all these collected works he he, he did a lot of writing uh, <laughs> um but you know, he, he knew what he was leaving behind. He left a legacy that all of us can work with and have worked with uh, for years. And I just wanted to go back to the issue about uh, the Bible that Tim brought up too, which is what I found, and, and it's only dawned on me maybe in the last week, but I, I think I concur with Tim that, um, you know, when I, whenever I've been troubled during my life in the last 20 years, I've found that if I just pick up anything, any of Jung's books, and begin to read it, somehow it brings, it pulls all of the collected works into me. Uh, and so it doesn't matter what specifically I'm reading. And I think that I think what Tim was saying about the Bible, it's it works the same way for people who have been very, uh, you know, st studious with the Bible, like Nancy, um, that you can just pick up the Bible and feel comforted uh, immediately. And, uh, you know, the, Dr. Young's work is like that for me. Uh, and uh, so to, that's just an observation. And I I think you might, you know, yeah. ask yourself whether that's happening to you. I don't know. Yeah, but. I find that's really true. And as a devoted Christian, um, you know, the Bible is pretty darn important. But but Jung's work is is so um, so profound and so spiritually alive that I, I agree with you that it ends up being very similar to scripture in that regard. Well, it, it's a living word. Uh, yeah. Would it be quite um, interesting, like the, the, to, at the moment, I've got Neptune transiting, which is my fourth house, which is astrology talk, but this would be likened to Noah and the Ark, this period of my life. And I think that it's to do with water and it's to do with the home and the moon and not knowing where we're going. And I think that what we're really going through now is a bit like Noah and the Ark. The yeah, <laughs> it's certainly an inundation, there's no doubt. Learn. We just <laughs> don't know. We've had all these assumptions and now we just don't know. Yeah, very, very true. Hey. This is the know. unknowingness. This yeah. is the unknowingness. Yeah. Yeah, so. Anyway, uh, Cindy, I hope I hope you're feeling better over the next couple of days. And, and uh, Penelope, I'm glad to see you uh, perky. <laughs> um, Jerome, um, how are you? I didn't ask you how you were, Jerome, and I felt like I interrupted you once or twice there, so I just wanted to apologize. Um, I felt there that I interrupted you a couple of times briefly and... No, was, no problem. I was enjoying the dialogue. So, you know, <laughs> so uh, it. Uh, yeah, well, I've, my allergies are really kicking up. I did a no-no. Uh, it was so beautiful yesterday. I went out and played in the fallen and suffering today. But, oh, yeah. you know, but I mean, it was just, I can't resist sometimes. So we had a, we had a terrific rainstorm this morning. So that oh, helped us. That's, that's what we're praying for over here. So yeah. send some our way. So, <laughs> so, I've shared uh, Kushbu's. Well, if you wear your mask, you could, you might help you. If you wear your mask, you're supposed to wear everywhere. Yeah, well, I've, uh, I have oh, allergy. Man. Yeah, I have allergy masks, but uh, I didn't. Oh dear. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So. Well, thank um, you. Oh. Go ahead, Cindy. I just want to say thank you, um, and I, I also want to say thank you to Nancy for her description and Penelope and Joss and um, this has been very enjoyable. Um, I just, uh, it actually, Penelope, you're giving me hope as to what to look forward to. So you're definitely, you're vibrant, you're awake, you're alive and that's not how I'm feeling today, but. What day uh, are you on? What day are you on? 
15. Okay, so 15, you, it was, it's 28. My doctor in the UK, quite a good surgery I have, um, doctor surgery. There are about 20 <coughs> doctors there. They, they did say to me that the people they're seeing go through is 28 days. But you know, so, my question is, how do you, how do you uh, assign day one? Because um, I'm assigning it based on the day I went to the emergency room or the first yeah. day I had symptoms. Yeah. I think the day one, I sent a message to my landlord complaining that there was a leak. My neighbors were letting through water. They keep having a shower and letting the water go everywhere. So I was very grumpy that the water had been coming through. And I sent, and I said to my landlord, I said, I, I said, I feel like my lungs, I feel like my, it's affecting my lungs. And the other thing I was doing at the time as well, I, you, none of, some of you may not have heard of this gentleman. He's called the Iceman. His name is Wim Hof. Wim Hof, he's on a lot, a lot of social media at the moment, and he does these breathing exercises. And what you do is, is you take 30 breaths in, 30, then you hold your breath for one minute, then you release, and then you breathe in again, and you hold your breath for 15 seconds. So I've started that on the 1st of January. Ah. I was doing that every night in bed, like I'd lay there, and it's the best way for me rather than meditation, because if I meditate, I think, when I do breathing exercises, I'm in there with just counting the breath, letting it go, holding the breath. So this guy, Wim Hof, is, is worth checking out. Um, he's a bit of a madman. Um, he likes um, in, the, in the cold with no clothes, literally hardly any clothes on. He's climbing up mountains. <laughs> so, Wim Hof, um, brilliant guy. And the thing is, is the breathing exercises, I realized, I looked at the, because it's got a ca calendar, it, I've got an app. And on the 11th of March, I couldn't breathe. I just, I was doing that breathing exercise and I thought, I can't breathe. It's like, what's wrong with me? But I well, was equating it to the, the leak. Could you, uh, Penelope, could you uh, spell out his name? Because I, I w, haven't. W-I-M, W-I-M for my favorite word, I won't say mother. <laughs> okay, Sorry. W I M. I can't say it, it triggers me. Okay, <laughs> W I M, and then what's the. What's Mother the Earth is okay. Hoff, H O F. Okay, W I M H O F. Okay. Yeah, brilliant man. Excuse yeah. me on the mother thing there, it's my own personal baggage. Yeah. <laughs> mother Earth is good though. So, uh, so Kushbu, <laughs> could you. Uh, Give us a, a blessing. I, I've put Kushbu's blessing uh, just in a two-minute version on the YouTube channel, uh, which you might want to download because it's so lovely. But uh, could you uh, do that again for us? It, it's very, it affects me very deeply, so I really appreciate when you do it. Sure, sure. Would you, would you mind like reading out the meaning of it, if you have? Uh, gee, I, will, well, it, it's uh, time will do that. Uh, if, I don't if, have a if anybody from, wants to do that, yeah, let okay. me let okay. me let me let me just look. I, I do have it, but it's going to take me a, a minute to get to it. Okay, so just a sec. Um, Kushbu, you are looking so dressed up today. Oh, it is. Uh, it is raining outside and it's cold, so I'm wearing a sweater. <laughs> so, uh, Kushbu, you've had uh, 76 people have heard it on YouTube besides the people that are here. So, uh, what I have for an English translation is, uh, people of the world, be happy. Let all the worlds be happy. Is, is that, is it let all the worlds or let all of the world be happy? Let all the worlds be happy. So plural. Yeah. Every, yeah. every world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. Uh, so let all the world be happy. Let. Um, all the people. Be all, happy. Yeah. Let all the people be happy. Let all the worlds be happy. So, yeah. um, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. It says, people of the world be happy. Let all of the worlds be happy. Yeah. So that's, it. that's what I have here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Uh, so 
if I take a deep breath. Yeah. Okay. Shall I? Yeah, go. Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. Yeah, Thank I you can, very much. I can hear that echoing across the world, Kushbu, and every yeah. every every time it just brings tears to my eyes. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a Buddhist uh, mantra that I could sing, but it, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have the lovely voice that you have. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, so thank you all. So Saturday night uh, in the U.S. and Sunday morning your time, Kushbu, it'll be 7.30 in the morning your time uh, when, yeah. we, when we do this again. And uh, uh, so you have the links, right, for the for the Saturday, Sunday events, Kushbu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let me know if yeah. you have any problems. And, um so every, uh, hopefully everybody's got all the links you need, and uh, I'll try again with YouTube later this afternoon if I do a reading, and we'll see if I've solved this problem. I think I might have. Um, thank all right. You. Thanks, everybody. Blessings. Yeah. Thank you, too. Aloha. Blessing, thank you. Blessings Aloha. to all of you. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye. Take care now. Bye-bye. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.